A couple days ago, I put a picture of this box up on Twitter and I said, I cannot wait to share with you what is inside this box. It takes a lot to make me excited for anything technology related these days. After doing this for almost a decade, you kind of see the same things done over and over and over. They slap a new coat of paint on it, they call it something new and they expect you to be excited about it. But you know what? This was just kind of a red herring, really. This box has nothing to do with what's inside. People were like, oh no, it says quantity 400 and net weight 17. It's probably fittings and you guys were, I was like, guys, it's a box that has stuff in it. Trust me, you want what's in here. The Elite XG270 QG from ViewSonic breaks the traditional ugly appearance of gaming monitors by providing an ultra clean design while still delivering gamers the features that they want most. Features like a one millisecond response time, IPS 165 hertz overclock display, black brushed aluminum stand with tilt and swivel, mouse and keyboard cable anchors and customizable subtle lighting. To learn more about the XG270 GQ from ViewSonic and to see current pricing, click the link in the description below. Now this is early access to a product. Um, this product does not come out for a couple of weeks. It is from Lee and Lee. A lot of you guys are like, it's the Lee and Lee water cooler. No, that's right here actually. This one I do have a sponsored video to do about. No, actually I don't. I'm just gonna be doing an ad about it. But this is the new Lee and Lee AIO. That's what we're talking about today. What we have in here is something that everyone needs in their system. Fans. Oh God, Jay, the biggest letdown ever. No, trust me, these fans are not what you think. And they gave me a bunch of them, which is perfect because I like them. So I saw these on Twitter with one of their uh, little marketing, like spiel y deal -y bobbers. They had a little video and they had some, some folks that they sent them out for review and stuff. And I was like, oh my God, I need like a pallet of those. This isn't exactly a pallet's worth, but nonetheless, it's plenty. Obviously we've got two different colors here. We've got black and we've got white, but Jay, they're just fans who, freaking cares. My biggest complaint I've had about anything RGB related, especially Corsair. I, I, look, Corsair makes great stuff. I've continued to complain about their, their integration of their cabling. Each fan has two wires that come off of it that connect to a lighting controller, which then has to connect to the Commander Pro, which then has to connect to SATA and has to connect to USB. And the little lighting controller also has a SATA connector. So two power connectors, a USB. And if you have three fans, that's six cords. If you have 12 fans, that's 24 cords. And two Commander Pros, four U SATA. Do you see the point? What we've got right here is Lee and Lee's UniFan or UniFan. I didn't even know what it was called. I was that excited <laughs> about it. The UniFan SL120. So here's what, how this works. You need the starter kit which is basically a three pack to get the system going. The individual fans that you see right here are not gonna work um, lighting wise with your system unless you have the controller that's with this. Yes, I know I'm already talking about a controller, but this is different, trust me. So this is everything that comes in the three pack. We'll look at the fans in a second. Here's the control box and each control box has four groupings, if you will. Now the crazy part is when I say grouping, what does that mean? Well, trust me, that's the exciting part about this video. These are the three fan connectors for the fans. Um, so what we've got here is a fan tack wire. So if you have all your fans connected to this, you need to still tell your computer the fans are running for various reasons. This plugs into the motherboard. This plugs into your existing ARGB header on the motherboard. Now I assume that this is so that we can control it with Aura or something like that. I haven't, I don't know yet, we'll have to test that, but it also does have its own software. It comes with its own USB cable so that you can plug it into a USB 2.0 uh, header. And then you can control the box. Here's the single power connector for it. And then here's an ARGB splitter, because if you're taking up your header with this, this will allow you to split it off. So you can have one going to the motherboard, one going to this device, and one going to another set of something that can be controlled with ARGB. So Jay, you talked about this being a lot less wiring. That looks like an awful lot of wiring. No, it's not. Let me show you why. Now the construction of this fan, I didn't expect it to be so nice, honestly. Um, feel, feel the weight of that fan. Like just, it's weighty, it's solid. The cage is strong. It's got like metal on the sides. So you got metal right here, nice brushed aluminum. This is obviously the white edition. Look at that. You have an actual metal ring. Does it spin straight? That is so satisfying that it is perfectly centered. It doesn't wobble. 
<laughs> All right, so here's the three pack. You've got your fan cage. You've got uh, markings on here that show you how to connect the other fans. You've got this nice trim, rubber standoffs, which mean it's not gonna vibrate when you plug it into something. It's nice firm rubber, so it's not gonna squish real bad either. Uh, they are 12 volt, 0.18 amps, and they are 800 to 1900 RPM with a minimum of, uh, I think, six volts to make it start spinning. But here's the thing, check this out. Typically, you have your three fans, and you've got wire set, wire set, wire set. And this would only be if you're having these go to three different locations. However, if you've got a radiator or something where you know you're gonna connect three of them together, check this out. This is my first time trying this. <gasps> so if you notice right here, you got slide contact, and on the opposite end, you've got these little spring-loaded pushpin connectors. You can connect, I'm not sure how many of these can connect in a row together, but it's gonna be plenty. So you would take this, mount this to your radiator or whatever, and now it is sending the signal for RPM and power daisy chain through here, which means also the orientation of the fans are all identical, and you're only gonna have one set of wires coming off here to control it by hooking this guy up on the end. So now you've got that aside, one set of wires coming off of this. Your proprietary plug, so you have to have this control box. This will plug into, let's say, grouping one. And you can plug this into the fan controller right there. So you got one grouping now that now has you know, three fans. If you've got a 480 rad, you could hook another one. But the best part is any lighting effects that happen here, because these are RGB and they're embedded in the sides right there. They're, they're so ghosted in there, you can't even tell that these light up, but they do. So you can see just how much less clutter you can have in your system by only having to manage that. This is all you have to manage in your case, really. And then how much length do we have here? Because that's the other thing, is they've gotta be long enough to reach. I feel like that's plenty of length, because this is gonna be on the back side of your case, and then this is gonna be up at the top or the bottom. So you can see that's a lot easier to manage than the typical mess so many of these brands give you when it comes to uh, connecting this all together. This is something no one's done before. There have been plenty of companies that have made daisy chains where you have an in and out, and you still have to have a little wire and a little wire and a little wire. Actually, that's the way Nebula is. But there's a limit to how many times you can use it or daisy chain it because it still just uses the ARGB header and there's a limit to how many LEDs it can control. Fun fact, one of the very front fans on my Nebula system at the very top and the very top LEDs are like the farthest point away. Those will every now and then just like seizure because the signal's not quite making it that far because of the power draw. And by the time the signal gets down that far, it's been eaten up by all the fans in front of it. And so one RGB header, ARGB header, is not enough to control all my fans. So I just stuck those way up there at the top where you can't see them where every now and then they just sort of spasm. It's also why my Nebula system is sitting there in a static color and not any sort of an effect because it's even worse when there's an effect. So having a solid color is easier for it to maintain those LEDs rather than having it do things. So we are gonna hook this up to our test bench because uh, I want to see how many we can connect together. Um, that's what you get with the starter kit, and that's why I said you need that, because what you get with the individual fan is basically just the fan itself and then that connector plug. And this is not going to connect to your motherboard or anything, because as you can see, it's got that proprietary connector on the end, which looks an awful lot like the one Fantex uses. So I wonder if it would work with like one of those. But anyway, um, that's not going to plug into your motherboard or anything. So you need the controller to plug it into. So you've got to start with a three pack starter kit. And here's the other thing, you ready for this? The Corsair Light Loop 120 fans can cost you as much as $45 a piece, $45. These guys, I know this sounds so infomercially, but I am really excited about this because these are 25 bucks each. Yes, that's still an expensive fan, but that's almost, it's just over half the price of the competitor with a cleaner solution. They do that. <sighs> they do this. <laughs> They're really solid, I feel, <laughs> feel that. Oh yeah, it's actually. It's not, <laughs> it's not like, look. You gonna karate chop it in half? Or no, what? I'm just showing that like, there's very little wobble right Let me grab a radiator so I can show you just how simple, because they touch, that was a weird sound. Because they touch, that's, 
they're going to be perfectly fine on a radiator. So what we need to what we need to test right here right now, because my concern when I first saw this was like, well, with them touching, is that going to make them maybe not fit in various cases and stuff? But I don't believe that's going to be the circumstance at all, because cases are designed for you to be able to slide the fans together. Radiators automatically make you touch them together. You know, they have to be like now kith. We should be able to get this one connected right there. And if this one connects right here, then we're good. There you go. So you wouldn't even have to put like all the fans in or all the screws. You could just do the four perimeters. Yes, look how nice that is. And on the black ones, are those silver or are they black? So you can see it's black anodized with a like a machined edge. Canford. So do you know what really sucks when you get an RGB fan? And I'm gonna continue to kind of throw Corsair under the bus a little bit here if I can find one. Okay, fine. I'll use, I'll make it fair. I'll use a fractal fan. <laughs> No, fractal fans have been one of my other go-to RGB fans because they just use a regular ARGB header and they have a splitter built in. So you don't, you can daisy chain these together. It's just you have, you know, two feet of cable. The RGB is always on the side that's pulling the air through, right? So they'd be going that way. But if you're using intakes in the bottom of your case and they're like that, you cover up a lot of the lighting. It's exactly what ended up happening to Little J's computer when I put those fans in the bottom pulling up. And those are Corsair Lightloop 120s. Because this has lighting on both sides of the fan, regardless of which way you mount it, you get your lighting effect. Do you see why I'm getting so excited over this? Look how quickly I installed them on a radiator. Look how quickly I installed them together. It's, in, it's just absolutely bonkers. So they're 120 by 25, very standard. They're fluid dynamic bearing. That might be the one thing that people might complain about is it's fluid dynamic. Fluid dynamic is a little bit more susceptible to dust build up in there. As the fluid starts to absorb some of the dust, it can get thicker, um, it gets dirty. There's certain orientations they sometimes don't like to be in. And I think that's where they were able to save some of the cost, which is what's made it um, you know, only about 25 bucks a piece. Plenty of fans out there are fluid dynamic, but what ends up happening with those is those are the fans that over time you kind of hear them go hit the fan and then and it stops. Because what happens is that fluid starts to leak out over time a little bit and then it becomes a little bit more play in the bearing and then they can wobble. So I would have loved to have seen a sleeved bearing, but I know that would have made, or even a ball bearing, but that would have made the price obviously more expensive. Um, they're 12 volt fan, five volt LED. Obviously you don't want to plug it into a 12 volt or you'll blow it up. They are 58.54 CFM at 1900 RPM. So plenty of airflow. But for radiators, 2.54 millimeters H2O. That's a very good amount of static pressure. Again, at 1900 RPM, max noise level says 31 dB. You can kind of take that and throw it out the window because that's gonna be in a perfect environment where it's tested like that with no restriction. And a lot of times what you hear in fan noise is the restriction of it hitting fins through a radiator or going through a, a grill. And that's what makes it sound a lot more noisy. So let me clean up the mess I made right here. Let's hook these up to the test bench. We'll test them both on the rad and off the rad to kind of see visually how the airflow works. And then we'll take a look at the lighting control. Because unfortunately that is one of the downsides is if this daisy chain RGB header thing doesn't allow us to use our existing controller, like as in like Aura or Mystic Light or whatever it may be, then you've got to have another piece of RGB software. All right, so we got them hooked up here to our test bench, which is an Asus um, 10 series something or another, irrelevant. So the software was actually pretty easy to download. They give you the link right here in the manual. It's their L-Connect software. And I'm gonna tell you right now, Phil and I have been playing with the software for a little bit. I feel like Lee and Lee is the hero that we need and deserve. It's not like the Dark Knight. I'm not the hero Gotham needs, I'm the hero. Wait, no wait, I'm not the hero. So the effect you see happening right now is all being done through Lee and Lee's um, L-Connect. Uh, I said over there on the other set, I wasn't sure if we could actually control it with the motherboard and we'll test that here in a second. But the first thing I wanna show you is not so much the software, but the actual performance of these fans. Now, as I said, these are what? 600 RPM to 1900 RPM? Somewhere around, I think 800 to 1900, somewhere around there. It's a good amount of air. These are running full speed right now. Can you even hear them when I do that? I guess you can, huh? It's right there, yeah, when you get it that close. They're so freaking quiet. And the amount of air that they blow. Okay, I know that this is not a representation of how much air they blow, I'll show you in a second. But just look at the lighting. The top and bottom lighting, like I said, no matter which way you face these fans, you get to see the light. Look at the little, uh, the aluminum rings on there, the little sticker rings. They are centered 
about as well as they can be, I guess. One of them, this one here wobbles slightly, but it's it's so minor that when this when it's actually spinning, you don't even notice it. But you need some sort of a representation of how much air these are flowing. <laughs> that that is if that is an, an indication of the wall and cushion of air. Jeez. <laughs> Dude! I can't zoom out anymore. <laughs> it's still... Oh, there, yeah. Dude! I feel like there's more airflow coming through this radiator at 800 RPM with these fans than at like 1500 RPM and like most of the other fans we tried. Okay, so let's talk about the software here for a second. This is the part, this is the other half of RGB. And I'm gonna tell you right now, so many companies over-engineer their RGB software, which gives you these inherent problems of like lag or just it doesn't work, uh, it doesn't remember when you turn it off, just all kinds of stuff. It just is buggy. The Lee and Lee L-Connect software is extremely basic. Here's your fan control mode. If you don't have the RGB or the fan header plugged into the motherboard, this is the only way you control it right here. So you've got manual, which is where you just select where you want the RPM to be. You don't get a ramp like you can't control a temperature ramp. And I think the reason for that is there's nothing here monitoring temperature, so it wouldn't know how to react, re respond to it anyway. But you can manually set the RPM. You have full speed, high speed, quiet, and PWM. Now PWM would be the pass through if you have it set to the motherboard. So you can allow the motherboard to connect, to control your fans while still using this fan controller. And that is through this PWM wire right here, like I said, if we were to plug this in, that would allow you to control your fans through the motherboard through your fan header. So you can see right here, you can control up to four fans per grouping. And that, that was something we weren't sure how many you could do. We only have three hooked up right here per grouping. So each grouping has its own control for a fan and LED mode. You control them individually, and then you can either apply it to that group or apply all, which will apply to everything. So let's talk about some of the different color modes right here. You've got, of course, your standard rainbow, and we'll just apply it to grouping two, which should be the black fans. Yeah, see we got these are still doing the original effect, and then here's the rainbow. And what we love about these LEDs is just the fact that they're diffused. It's a lot like the G-Skill um, RGB top, which in my opinion, diffused RGB looks so much better than um, non-diffused, because the individual LEDs really kind of take away the effect. So you got your pretty standard modes here. Static, rainbow, breathing, color cycle. Runaway is kind of a fun one. So here's runaway for the black one by itself which we think is very right, Knight Rider, you know. <laughs> and you can change the, the background color and the main color, you know, and, and then black is just basically off, or you can set it to blue, right, apply. So there's that one grouping. Or if we had applied to all, it'll apply it to all the groupings. Now look how fast that updates. It's really fast. Now, what you might not be able to tell on camera, because these videos are normalized or, or set to a 29.97 a, uh, FPR, yeah, 29.97, right? Yeah. yeah. 30 FPS, um, these are probably 60 Hertz polling rate. The, the, the refresh rate of these LEDs and how fast they move, it's at least 60. Phil looked at that and was like, oh my God, those are so smooth. The animation. Yeah, the animation is, is extremely smooth. Um, so you can have a total of 16 fans on a single controller. That is just nuts. Fireworks kind of neat. It goes together and then boom, it explodes. I do also feel like there's not as many RGB modes as there should be on here given how well their software seems to be working, but that's okay. Let's say you have Aura or you have Mystic Light and you want to use that. Well, what'll happen here is if you click this button right here, this says Motherboard Software Sync. It essentially turns this controller into just an RGB strip. You notice the lights aren't on right now. That's because we've got Aura Crate running and we've got this set right now to Audio Spectrum, which is uh, basically what responds to noise and stuff. And we'll... I didn't realize that was the freeze frame. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> so we wanted to see how well this reacts to, let's say, music and stuff. So here's the way they react to Aura. And as you can see, we have them set to the music of our, you know, the audio here. Look how reactive. You can see they sync with our, our RAM and our motherboard perfectly. And even the shade of color looks very, very correct. The problem is sometimes you'll find one company's blue is more green and another one's blue is more white. 
These look like they match the G-Skill translucent uh, or diffuse tops perfectly. And then if we take a look at some of the other modes here, and, and I want you to notice just how quickly it transfers it. So we've got both pieces of software running and that's usually a no-no. That's like conflict city. If you try and have one device controlled by two, two different pieces of software. But remember, it's a controller. It can literally just cut off communication and take over. So if I unsync it, see how fast that came back? Watch how quickly this hands off control. You ready? Three, two, one, click. Two seconds, not even that. Yeah. Look at this. This is what I've been waiting for. And it's funny, you would almost think that my rants about other, they are, the way other companies do this has been leading up to this like review. And that's not the case. I literally, this is like last minute. I literally tweeted them was like, oh my God, I need these. I wasn't a part of their product launch. I wasn't a part of their review team or the review cycle. And, and this is like the first time we've actually done anything specific with Lee and Lee. And it's like, it checks all the boxes for me. Fan control, daisy chain. Daisy chained in a way I would have never imagined, where you do it through the cage of the fan, not through little wires. Great static pressure, great acoustics, great looks. It's a great fan for both airflow and static pressure. And usually with that type of fan, you've got to give and take on one or the other. Great airflow, okay static pressure. Great static pressure eh, on airflow. But it, it's got the, the rubber pads, it's got RGB on the top and the bottom. It, it gives you a usable RPM range. A lot of fans stop at like 1200 RPM or 1500 RPM. This goes to almost 2000. And while doing that, it stays at a, a maximum acoustic level of 38 decibels. You know, I'm not surprised that a company like Lee & Lee is our savior in all of this. 16 fans, a single controller, a maximum of one wire harness per group of four. And then you have technically only two wiring harnesses are needed if you don't plan on using the motherboard ARGB controller or the PWM and you just want the controller to do it all. This would literally give you the cleanest, tidiest setup possible. What would you do with these fans? And do you need them? The answer is yes. You just don't know it yet. Again, Lee and Lee had nothing to do with this review other than I was like, please send me some. And they were like, okay, I need them to send me more. I want to use these in a build but I'm not gonna waste them. They're gonna go into a build that matters and something that's gonna be used every single day. I thought about putting them in my work PC, but to be honest, all that really does is play World of Warships while Phil does all the actual editing. My only gripe, and I hope this is temporary, is they don't come in a 140 millimeter variant. I feel like with the amount of cases now that are using 140 millimeter fans, uh, Nebula for me is running, what? Three, six, nine, 12 140 millimeter fans. I would literally put these in Nebula and tear it apart and change all the fans out in my very next video if these had 140s available. So Lee and Lee, please make these in a 140. Anyway, thanks for watching. Sound off below what you guys think about these fans. For me, it checks all the boxes. It'd be nice to have a sleeve bearing in there, but we'll see how long these fluid bearings last. If you guys need these fans, check the description down below. I believe they're available at Newegg. I'll put a link there. Um, they will be available at Newegg anyway. They're not available yet. They come out later this month. Thanks for watching guys, and as always, we will see you in the next one. And I'm gonna go ahead and put this back to here. There we go.